For many generations, the shadow of violence has hung over women and children in the Pacific. This violence touches the lives of many people, not just the women and girls who are often the victims. Studies on violence against women worldwide reveal that one out of every three women have experienced either physical or sexual violence by a partner. In the Pacific, that number has reached even higher proportions. It's a major problem. With current studies that have been done showing that almost 60% of all women have experienced some sort of violence. And uh, that is a major worry for us. You all need to open the newspapers now. And those are the cases that are reported. You know, there are many, many other cases that are being swept under the carpet. A workshop on preventing violence against women was convened by the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women, or UN Women, for those who work on gender-based violence to deepen their understanding of and what prevention means in the Pacific context. The difference between uh, working on prevention and working on and, and responding to or the responses to the to violence, you know. Uh, with the prevention you, uh, interventions, it is something that you have to do uh, and, and get people to, to know and understand. Loss of job opportunities, loss of productivity, um, and has a, a huge overall impact on society and the level of development. In 2009, UN Women introduced the Pacific Regional Ending Violence Against Women Facility Fund. The purpose of this Pacific Fund, as it became known, was to provide assistance to government and non-government organizations that were active in preventing violence against women and children. When this project began, um, it had been conceptualized way back in 2007-2008. Um, UN Women thought that it would be a facility not only of funding but of capacity development for efforts that are done at community level and uh, especially because these are the efforts that hardly receive funding. Today, the Pacific Fund provides assistance to over 30 community groups and government organizations throughout the Pacific Islands region with generous support of AusAid. Support from UN Women goes well beyond providing grants. Technical support and capacity building have steadily increased to meet the needs of funded organizations. Although the Pacific Fund projects work with a wide variety of men and women from all walks of life, one of the common themes in their projects is prevention. Actually go to the secondary schools and talk about sexuality in a broad sense. Through working with these grantee organizations over the first few years, it was clear that more attention was needed on preventing violence. There is also a need to know if efforts to prevent violence at the community level are having the desired impact. So many of the organizations that are addressing prevention, I think, I think there's a very common thread among them, which is many people are struggling to know if what they're doing is having an impact. We know that Violence that happens in families affects not just the woman who experiences violence, it affects the children, it affects their future emotional, psychological, um, economic well-being. And for prevention, then it's really key to try and target your interventions at those risk and protective factors uh, in that particular cultural context. So try to reduce the risk factors in a society and promote the protective factors. And because they're the ones that are related to violence, we think that's you know, the key way to, pre to prevent violence in the long term. During the workshop, Pacific Fund grantees learned that to address prevention within a cultural context required them to develop projects that were often unique to their country and their situation. You know, um, and then what other partners might you, you need to work with? Okay. 
culture and religion is uh, very strong in um, Tongan culture. And it's um, hard for us to change people's um, behavior and belief. One of the prevention efforts in Tonga featured radio talkback shows to help break the tradition of silence on violence against women. With our radio programs, especially with our talkback shows, a lot of men have called in with the support of our uh, talkback shows. So we feel that that is something, uh, is a success in the prevention uh, program that we hold out in the villages. Religion is a strong force for social change in the Pacific, so some Pacific Fund grantees also worked within faith-based organizations. The role of men is very important because men um, dominate, especially in terms of uh, lay ministers and priests in our, in our parishes. We would like to, you know, uh, be able to influence them and bring them on board and because they would, they would be able to um, disseminate this, this information on eliminating violence against women through uh, preaching from the pulpit. Pacific Fund grantees also shared that data collection plays an essential role in prevention. Data helps us to understand the situation um, and it's only by knowing what we're looking at, knowing what the problem is, um, that we're going to be able to really stop it. Because Everyone would like to know what is the result of the work that they are doing. And to me that is very, very important and that is an area that we will further work on in terms of measuring the, uh, the success of the projects. One of the things we, we came up with is called the five steps uh, for evidence and theory-based programming. This is a tool for those that are interested in, are planning to do uh, work on the prevention of violence against women. So the five steps are really about using data, using that data to be much more um, strategic in targeting changes you want to make and groups you want to work with, then thinking about how that change happens. For us at Rainbow Women's Network, we need to know how effective um, our work is and uh, that's what I hope to improve on, our monitoring and evaluation, and how effective we are. Actually be able to categorize and, and be able to see, like that's the, the information that we're talking about is already there. Yeah, and that's, that's great. To undertake data collection amongst their very diverse clients, Pacific Fund projects had to develop unique ways to collect data that was acceptable in the local context. We had a storytelling workshop where these women, they came and they shared uh, uh, real life experiences that they have gone through. It broadens the knowledge of uh, the male counterparts so that they realize that there's not only one way to everything but two ways, that is gender-wise, respecting each other kind of assess the level of knowledge and, and, and attitude and practices um, on, on violence on women and basic human rights. And the work that we've been doing with them, um, they've been able to, to improve how they relate to women. Data collection was only the first stage in creating effective prevention campaigns. The grantees also discussed the value of looking at campaigns in other countries and analyzing what worked there to see if it could be adapted to work in the Pacific context. You can never take one project and just pick it up and plant it somewhere else. So part of our, our five steps is uh, thinking about how to contextualize and localize the successes of the many Pacific Fund projects has made it clear that to address the prevention of violence against women and children in the Pacific context, it requires a Pacific solution. Well, I should say polygamy because it depends. If you pay, then you can have another wife. When we target these people and then gender sensitize them, they actually go out there and then create the awareness and influence the community to actually know what is violence against women and in terms of preventing it. Most of the men that are involved and participate in the uh, awareness uh, programs, they really participate and involve in, uh, in the women's program, trying to change their mind and behavior and attitudes towards the women. 
um, to improve the quality of prevention, it's about being clear on what you're changing and also being clear about where that change fits into a process, a long-term process. There are more women coming out to talk about it, and I think that is a success that the silence has been broken. And I think for primary prevention, it has to start for, with, with the students. Why that happens in their society, that might be an attitudinal improvement that you're measuring. The effects of violence against women in the Pacific is massive. Impact. It, it goes beyond just me, it goes beyond you, it goes beyond my community. You know, it, the effects reverberates throughout the waters of the Pacific.